This is my 1959 Edsel. You've probably seen it featured in other videos if you follow my channel, but I've never really had a chance to go over what I did to build the car. And for today, we're just gonna go over the rear suspension in this. Now, originally I had this car lowered on three inch blocks and it looked cool. And that's sort of what the idea was that I had was to make it look cool, but it really wasn't that practical. The bottom of the car scraped a lot. It didn't ride too bad, but there was something really annoying that happened every time I left a stoplight and gunned it. Went over a speed bump, driveway, or uneven road. There was either a banging or a scraping sound. You can imagine that after a while, scraping on every speed bump, driveway, uneven road, and the awful banging every time I left a light, that this got old. My passion is to build higher end custom cars, so to me, this went against my personal philosophy on how a car should be built. In the fall of 2016, I pulled the car into the garage with a few ideas about putting adjustable suspension in the Edsel. I wanted to keep the same ride height, but gain the ability to raise the suspension to prevent scraping and fix the banging in the back. There were two reasons this banging was happening. The first was the factory drive shaft tunnel tapered down instead of tapering up to account for suspension travel. Of course, if the stock ride height was 3 inches taller, this would never happen. The second reason for the banging was the blocks raised the rear end high enough to make it, for lack of a better term, tippy. So leaving the line a little bit aggressively would cause the pinion to whip up and bang the floor. Now that the pieces were coming together, I came up with a plan. I cut out the back of the drive shaft tunnel and then I cut out the trunk floor about halfway back to give myself some room to take as many measurements as I could. I discovered a few interesting things about this car when taking the measurements. There was a huge frame kick up for the rear suspension which lent itself well to installing link suspension. But the floor brace was very close to the back of the rear end. I had to do some thinking about this. I ordered a set of Weldon airbag frame plates, and then some Slam Specialties airbags, the ones with the built-in bump stops. Now that I had the bags I wanted to use, I knew what my airbag height would be when the car was at ride height. Due to the lack of distance behind the rear end, which I wanted to reserve for the Watts link anyway, I went to an airbag over axle setup. I cut some spacers out of old roll bar tubing that I had, which gave me my height for the frame place to sit. The first part got me excited to keep going, so I removed the leaf springs from the car and cut some more roll bar tubing spacers to set the car at the lowest the car would sit with the bump stops and the airbags. I didn't want the car to lay frame. To me, this is dangerous. We have to think safety. If I lost an airbag on the highway and the suspension dropped, I didn't want the frame dragging on the ground, putting me out of control. So I took that into account when I made this measurement. Doing this, also gave me the clearance measurement for the drive shaft tunnel. I raised the piece that I cut out about an inch and a half in the back and half an inch in the front. I body worked this so that everything lined up and looked like it was factory. After all, when building custom cars, things need to look like they belong there. When I built this suspension, I didn't have a tubing bender. In fact, I still don't. To get around this, I had to come up with alternative ways of using tubing bends. I needed to build an attachment point for my link arms that went between the frame rails that also acted as a cross member to make the frame more rigid. I wanted to build an arch at the front of the kick up that would serve this purpose. I thought about filling the tubing with sand and torching the tubes to bend them, but I didn't have a torch either. I went down to the local speed shop and asked to look at what they had in stock for roll bar kits. What was cool was the guys that worked there didn't think it was that strange of a request when I told them what I was doing and they helped me out. I ended up buying a roll cage kit for a 68 Camaro. At home, I unboxed the roll cage kit and cut two of the bends out to make them a single bend that I needed for the link mounts, welded it in the middle, then cut it on the ends to fit between the frame rails. This was a start, but I needed it to be stronger 
So I triangulated it back to the frame by coping the pipe and coming back to the top part of the kick up in the frame. Here is where things really got interesting. Now I had my ride height. I had areas to mount my pickup points. I read up on suspension dynamics and how the instant center affects ride quality. I took many, many measurements to put the instant center at the bottom of the front bumper on the car. Doing the research to build this, I knew I was starting with a blank slate. I decided on a three-link suspension for a few reasons. The first was it gave me the ability to have more packaging for the shocks and airbags I wanted to run. I had very limited spacing to run the upper links due to the short distance from the cross member I built to the center line of the differential. I used the 2005 to 2010 Mustang as a foundation for learning what and how I needed to build the three link as well as some aftermarket systems available. I created a template for all of my link arms using cardstock. The top link went from the top of the diff to the cross member while the lower arms went to the bottom of the cross member. The lower arms were 30% longer than the top link. I use this ratio based on many different sources from road racing forums and discussion websites. Locating the position of the rear end became another research extravaganza. I looked into panhard bars, which I have installed on other cars. They are simple and work relatively well. As the suspension travels, the panhard bar creates an arcing motion which can do a couple of negative things. The first is, I have seen tires rub wheel wells that have lots of clearance at ride height. The other, which is more of a concern, is that at highway speeds, going around a corner can cause the back end to throw, creating unpredictability in the back end of the car. I started to focus my studies on a Watts link. The Watts link looked a lot more complicated than what it actually was, but it did require much more fabrication. The bell crank in the middle of the two bars of the Watts link allowed the differential to travel up and down in a linear motion, leaving lots of tire room without any arcing, a benefit over the panhard bar. Once I had the Watts link all measured out, I templated the connection points, bell crank, and the holder for the bell crank center pin relative to the center line of the differential. I could move forward now that I had all of my templates completed to scale for the suspension. I gave the templates to my wife, who is a whiz with CAD, to have them drafted. I sent the DWG files to Welder Series along with all the measurements for the five link bars that I needed for the car. They built the bars and cut the brackets that had been drafted, and they sent them back to me faster than I would have thought possible, and was super impressed with the customer service that I received from them. Now to assemble, I tack welded the pieces cut by Welder Series and checked all my measurements for alignment. The car still needed a sway bar to complement the inch and a quarter custom made sway bar that I put in the front. Due to space constraints, I had to unconventionally mount the shock. Therefore, I had to build the mounts for the shocks integrated into sway bar mounts myself. Coincidentally enough, the Edsel is a similar size and weight to a Ford Ranger. I ordered shocks and a three quarter inch sway bar for a Ranger. The shocks ended up being ahead of the differential since there was no room for them behind the rear end with the Watts link and the sway bar. From the front of the frame mounted airbags, I mounted another piece of roll bar bend to the cross member and mounted the shocks to the bend. Everything worked quite well with this setup and I was quite happy with it. I had drove it for two summers before I made a trunk floor to cover it. This gave me enough time to make sure there were no issues with the suspension. In recent years, I've become more and more interested in metal shaping. This led me to purchase an English wheel, a planishing hammer, shrinker stretcher, and a bead roller. This allowed me to build a separation panel to cover the huge hole I made in the trunk floor to complete the suspension. I could have flanged a flat panel, spot welded it, and called it good, but I knew I wouldn't have been satisfied with it. To add some artistic interest, I took a picture of the Fender Edsel emblem and printed it out. I transferred this image to a piece of sheet steel by drawing it on with a sharpie and bead rolled out the big E with some horizontal beads rolled beside it. I flanged both ends and spot welded it to the floor. I wanted this to look like something that it would have came from the factory, classy, and matching consistency in badging. To try and maximize the trunk space, 
I wanted to build the top of the floor in different pieces over the suspension that screwed together in case I needed to access anything on the suspension. I made a bubble in the floor for the top link bar by cutting a metal bowl in half and making a tunnel out of sheet metal. For the flat part of the floor, I rolled 1 inch wide beads that matched the rest of the trunk floor that was originally. Lastly, I made covers for the shocks using the planishing hammer. Once I had this completed, I painted the trunk floor with bed liner top and bottom to protect it and screwed it in again to be able to access the suspension if needed. I can't express how happy I am with how this project turned out. The ride quality is like a new car, it handles well, the suspension is adjustable and I rarely scrape the car these days, and with the big sway bars, it handles unbelievably well. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to view my other videos. I will be creating more content, so like, comment, and subscribe. The content will only be getting better from here, so let's hang out in the garage.